In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at one very important topic in financial accounting. The topic is how to prepare return outwards day book. I said how to prepare return outwards day book. You know, it's not enough to understand what return outwards day book is without an understanding of how to prepare the book. You know, a lot of times students, when they come to the reading the theoretical framework of accounting, they rush into the definition, but sometimes lack the understanding of how to prepare the books. Accounting is more practical than theory. So in today's lesson, we are going to look at how we will prepare the um, return outwards day book. And then we will also look at how we will be able to solve questions that, that is centered on return outwards day book. But before we look at all that, let's consider our lesson objective. Our lesson objective um, in today's lesson is going to be centered on just four different points. Number one, we are going to see how we'll be able to define return outwards day book and then we we'll see how we can explain the procedures involved in preparing return outwards day book and then we'll look at how we can prepare the return day book and we will answer related questions from our exam guide now having done that we we'll, at the end of the lesson we we'll also consider if we've been able to achieve our um, lesson objective and what we call success criteria. This is going to, they are going to serve as our major, our the benchmark, what we can look out for before we can finally say we have achieved our objective. And they involve number one, the, the, how to de define, if we've been able to define return outwards day book, then we can say we have achieved our objective number one. Then we've been able to explain the procedures prepare the return outwards day book and then answer related questions from our exam guide, we can finally conclude that yes, we have achieved our, um, our objective. Now having said that, let's look at what return outwards day book is all about. I said that return outwards day book is simply the book for recording goods returned to the suppliers as a result of one reason or the other goods that is returned or goods that are returned back to the supplier we have gone to the supplier to the market to buy our goods all our items and then there is need for us to return i say one of the reasons that can make us to return these goods number one is defectiveness some goods are defective in nature what i mean by defective is that they are below standard when you buy an item that is below standard, there is need for you to return it back to the seller or the supplier because there's what we call reputation, what we call goodwill, the possibility of an old customer to continue to patronize a business even when there are changes in the ownership of the business is what we call goodwill. So every businessman or woman, we want to establish a good name. So you will not want to, you won't want to take the risk of selling out a defective goods to your customers. So once you detect an item or a group of items that are defective in nature, there is need for you to return it back to your supplier. Some other time, the goods can be damaged in the process. Some, go, some, dam, some goods can, can, you know, can go through damages. Maybe you have some items, maybe you, you went to, you are dealing on breakable items and then taking the item to the shop, you discover that some of the items are broken in nature. You, you can't sell it. You have to return it back to the, the, the seller. You know, when these items are broken, we can call them damage, damaged items or perishable items. 
you know, you bought this, you paid for these items, and then bringing the item to the shop, you discover that some of the items, you know, they are they are already damaged because they could not stand the strength or the stress of um, transportation from the destination of your supplier to the destination of your business. So you are, there is need for you to return it. And another one is what we call wrong kind. You can order something and what will be sent to you is different. So when you see that what is given to you is different from what you have ordered, there is need for you to do what? To return. So basically, return artwork book is prepared to record this transaction. Whenever an item is returned back to the seller, there is need for you to put it down. You have to record what has been returned because your return artworks will affect your purchase. If what you bought initially a goods worth five hundred thousand and you are returning two hundred thousand, that two hundred thousand that you have returned, it will affect the five hundred thousand worth of goods that you bought initially or originally. So if you subtract your return actors from your purchase, what is left is the original or what we call the net purchase. Now I say it is also called purchase returns. He said the treatment of discount will be the same with the treatment in the purchases day book. Now, I just explained that this transaction will always affect your what? Your purchase. That is why they call it purchase return because it will always go, it will always go with your what? Your purchase. Your return outwards will always affect your purchases. Now let's look at the procedures for return outwards day book. What are those things you must observe? What are those things you must understand if indeed you want to prepare the return artworks day book? Number one, you must understand that return artworks book is sent, is entered immediately goes are returned. This one does not, it, it, it does not go through the process of let it be daily, let it be weekly, let it be month. Immediately the item or group of items are returned back to the supplier. It must be recorded. It must be recorded down. You have to enter it immediately into the book. And then the second thing you must understand is that the return at was account in the general ledger is what credited anytime you see a transaction that has to do with debit and credit we will not forget our national flag in accounting very important it is called the double entry principle it is centered on who receives and who gives at every point you debit who is receiving and you credit who is giving there is never a time when this um, principle can be compromised so when we said that the return outwards account in the general ledger is credited, we are actually saying that return outwards because items are going out of the company. We are giving out items. We are, we are expected to be credited. Meanwhile, the supplier will be what? Debited. That will lead us to the next point where I said that the supplier's account is what? Debited. The supplier's account must be debited because the supplier is, they are the one what? Receiving the item because they have to be debited. They are receiving the item. Since we are debiting who receives and we are crediting who gives, there is need for us to debit the supplier and what? Credit the giver, which is the, our company. And then the next question is, why do we need to keep account for the supplier? The reason is because these items were actually bought on credit. So there is need to keep record or track of the people that decided to send on credit to us. So since we are supposed to pay this money in a later date, if we don't keep account of what we have returned back to the owner, by the end of the day, we may pay more than what we are supposed to pay or we may pay less. So, but to, 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 to be guided in payment, there is need for us to keep this account. And then if we have understood this, then there is need for us to look at an illustration that we really bring the message home. If you look at this illustration, you will see that we have two different companies that we have actually bought goods from. We have bought an item from Coca-Cola and we have also bought an item from P. 
Peterson Limited. Now, what I want to say at this point, before we look at the illustration, is that if you are looking at the video for the very first time, I will recommend very strongly that you go back to purchase the book and understand the, the, the system or the procedures of purchase the book. Because by the time you understand the purchase day book, when we explain return artwork, it will be very simple and easy for you. The return artwork is just an extension of purchase day book. Meanwhile, I also want to point out that purchase day book is also a subsidiary book. We are looking at subsidiary books. We have looked at um, purchase, um, chase day book. We have looked at purchase day book. Now we are looking at return artwork day book. So if you have not understood purchase day book, it will be difficult because in return artworks day book, the, the same way purchase day book, sales day book, and other subsidiary book, the same way they are prepared, that's the same way re, um, return artworks day book is prepared. It has a column for date, has a column for particulars, has a column for folio, has a column for details, and column for total. Let's quickly illustrate that on the board for better understanding now our company we are what we are um dixon and sons that's the name of our company we are what dixon's and sons and we have transacted business with coca-cola and peterson um, companies so what we are going to do let's not forget that dixon and sons They are, the owner of the, they are the owners of the company. And then we have transacted business with what? Coca-Cola and Peterson. Meanwhile, what are we preparing? We are preparing what? Put, um, return at Wars Day Book. Now, this Return at Wars Day Book, I want, to, I want to bring to our notice that it is, it's also called Purchase Returns. So you can either call it Purchase Returns, Purchase returns, or you call it returns day book. So you come here. Let's take um, return return at worst day book. You write your returns at worst day book, and then you on you rule your line. Now we say we have a, a column for date. A column for particulars, a column for folio, a column for what? Details. Let's extend the particulars a bit since it's going to have more information than all other columns. So we are going to make it larger and bigger than the rest. So we write particulars. Particulars. And then we have folio. We have details, and then we have our total. So this is how it will look like. The same pattern with purchase sales day book and return in was day book. They have the same pattern. Don't forget to put your Naira sign here. And then let me emphasize on the the relevance of each of these columns. The date column is used to record the period under which we are preparing the account. And then the particulars, we use that to describe the, the, the transaction, the supplier or the complaint with which we are transacting the business with. And then the folio, we always spell, the, spell out the page, the particular page where these transactions can be found in the general ledger. And then the detail will tell you the value that you are expected to pay in a particular transaction, Why the total is a summation of all the values. So let's look at what we have. We said August 20th, we return to Coca-Cola. Now we bought these goods from Coca-Cola maybe at the beginning of August. But around August 28th, we discover that eight crates of the Coke we bought at 100 Naira, it has an issue. Remember, we said one of the reasons why we can return our goods is defectiveness. We also talk about wrong um, and damages, talk about wrong kind. So if we bought um, Coke from um, Coca-Cola and then we discover that Eight crate of the Coke, they didn't meet up to our standard or our expectation. There is need to return it. 
So at this point, we have 8 kg. What you do me here? Come here, right? You are August. August what? August 28. We bought this. We, we are returning this to who? Coca-Cola. Right, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. And then what are we returning? We are returning eight crate of Coke at what? 100 Naira what? Eight crate of Coke at 100 Naira each. What does that mean? Let's do the calculation. This is 100 times 8. This is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 1 is what? 8. That's 800. So the value there is what? 800. Let's make progress. And then, on the same 28, we return 2 crate of Fanta at 150 each. So that same 8, we have Two, two crates of Fanta at what? At 150 Naira each. What do we have? Let's do the calculation. This is our 150 times 2. Two crates. We have 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry 1. 2 times Time 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. You have what? 300. So now, 300 is what you have at the end of the period. You have what? 300. If you add 300 to 800, here plus here will give you 0. Here plus here will give you 0. Here plus here will give you what? 11. You will be left with what? 1,100. But there is a clause. The clause is what? It said that this return is subjected to a trade discount of 20%. At this point, I want to explain something. You know, accounting is more practical than theory. You ask yourself, how can somebody give you discount for a good that you are returning back to the person? Is it actually, is it realistic? Or we are trying to paint a scenario that is not real at all. It is very, very possible. Now, the, the, the supplier can grant discount in two different ways. The, the, the supplier can give you discount as a result of your commitment to the business, just to encourage you. He can decide to give you this discount, you know, as what we call a total discount. Something that is deducted from the whole of the items that you bought. And then he can also say, okay, because of the damages, eh, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to give you a discount. This trade discount, I'm going to do what? I am going, this discount is going to be charged on these particular items you are returning because of what you have gone through. Remember, you actually go through a lot to be able to return this item to the person. All these things can be compensated. So you can say, okay, for this particular item that you are returning to me, I am going to give you discount. So what we got, what will happen is that instead of you, if what you are returning is 5,000 Naira, that is what you are returning. That money, because of the discount that this particular person is going to give you, you are going to pay less than that. That's the way it is. Now, but the question I want to ask that every student we ask is that, what if you are returning this and there was an initial discount that was given let's for instance if you were given a discount of let me assume initially you were given a, a discount of 10 percent generally and you are now returning a, a, some part of the goods how do you treat the discount what will happen is that if you are given a discount of let me say 10 percent you bought a you bought goods what let's assume you bought goods what five hundred thousand and you are giving a discount of 10 percent times 10 all over 100 this we cancel this this we cancel this this about what this about fifty thousand so that's this about fifty thousand fifty thousand minus five hundred thousand will give you what four fifty four hundred and fifty thousand this four hundred and fifty thousand is what you are supposed to pay to your supplier 
Meanwhile, in the process of transacting business, you decide to return a goods worth 100,000. Now, how do you match this transaction? How do you marry the transaction? Now, you are going to handle it in a very technical way. First of all, you don't calculate your 10%. First of all, subtract this your return outwards from the initial cost of the asset before of the item before you charge your 10%. What am I saying in a nutshell? 500 was the initial amount that 500,000 was the initial amount you are supposed to pay. And you are giving a discount of 50,000. Now you are returning a goods of 100,000. What are we going to do? The supplier will expect you, you will subtract this 100,000 from the 500,000 before you charge your 10%. So if you do that, it's going to be 500 minus 100,000. It will give you what? 400,000. So this 400,000 is what you are going to calculate your 10% on. If you calculate 10% on your 400,000, you are going to get what? 40,000. So this 40,000 will be now will now be subtracted from your 400,000 to give you 360,000. So 360,000 is the amount of money that you are expected to pay. Now, when you are writing either WAEC, you are writing JAM, you are writing NECO, or any accounting related question, you can see a question like that, where the examiner will give you the overall discount, and then give you return upwards, and give you the amount of goods purchased, or bought. What you are going to do is that, first of all, subtract your returns from the cost of the item before you charge your discount. Haven't explained that. Let's go back to where we are coming from. Where are we coming from? We are coming from the transactions between Dixon and Dixon and Sons and what Coca-Cola. Now we have established the fact that this will give you this. Now one thousand one hundred is the amount of money that we are expected to pay Coca-Cola. Meanwhile, there is a discount there. Discount of what? 20%. So this discount of 20%, you come here and you write, don't forget, less in accounting means subtraction. Less what? 20 discount, which is what? Which is this value, 20 over 100 times what? 1,100 all over 1. This zero, we cancel this zero. This zero, we cancel this zero. You'll be left with what? 20 times 1. One. That's 20 times 11. Let's do it together. We have 20 times what? 11. This zero, 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. So you have 2, you have 0, 2, 2. That's 220. So you have your 200, 220 here. That is your discount. So this your discount, this your discount will be subtracted from this value. If you subtract, you have zero. Then two cannot be taken from this. You have to borrow one from here to make it 10. 10 minus two is what? Eight. Now, now here we'll be, left, we'll be left with zero. Now take one from here to you are 10 here. And then subtract two from here, you have what? Eight. So your discount here is eight. Your figure here now is what? 880. So you'll be left with what? 880. This 880 is the amount of goods that you need to return, the value of goods that you are returning to this person. Now you ask, in what way will this now affect the in what way will this now affect Coca-Cola? When Coca-Cola will give you goods, Coca-Cola will not give you the goods that what this. What Coca-Cola will give you, the initial good, this, this, um, this 2020 will not be added to the value of goods that Coca-Cola will give you. You are returning. They give you discount on this. This is the worth of goods that you are returning. But the, the, the value of goods that you are actually taking is going to be what? 1,100. That is the way it is. The goods that 
Coca-Cola will give you. Because this thing is what you are returning back to Coca-Cola. There is need for Coca-Cola to give you something in returns. You are not returning the goods and you go back like that. That is what we call credit note receipt. Immediately this good get to um, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola will give you what we call a credit note. Because you have been what? Under charge. By the time you subtract this from the value of goods that Coca-Cola um, has given to you, you must have been under charge. So Coca-Cola will give you what we call credit note. And that credit note is credit note that you have received. In that credit note, it's not this value. It's if Coca-Cola will not give you this value of goods. Coca-Cola will give you 1,100 against the 880 Naira worth of goods that you have returned to him. That is how to get this 20%. This 220 Naira that is a discount given to you. All right. Let's make progress. What happened again? On the 28th of August, we bought from Peterson. Let's write our 28th of August. 28th. Write our Peterson here. Peterson Limited. What happened? 10 bags of law at 15 Naira each. Is it 10? 100 bags. 100 bags of what? Floor. At what? At 50 Naira each. Let's do our calculation together. This one is simply 100 times 50. This is 0. This is 0. This is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times this 0 is 0. 5 times and one is what five so you have zero 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 five you have what five thousand so hundred times fifty we give you what five thousand so you have five thousand you have your five thousand here five thousand and then the next transaction is four hundred soap at two naira each what do we have there 400 soaps at 2 naira each. This one is very simple. 2 times 400, it will give you what? 800. So now, you are going to add, add this to this. If you add 800 to 5,000, for the sake of my Dearly beloved student, I will take my time to do all the addition so you can appreciate what I am doing. I don't want you to be left out of the calculation. Follow every step as the lesson is going on. Now, 800 plus 5,000. Write your 800 here. Add your 0, 0. And then 8 plus 0 is what? Is 8. And then you have your 5. So you are going to have what? 5,800. So you have your... 5,800. That's 5,800. It will not end here. Why? Because there is also a discount. There's also a what? A discount. So the discount is 10%. So you come here and you write less what? 10% discount. 10% what? Discount. You are discount. What do we have there now? You now have 10 over 100 times what? 5,800 over 1. Now, this 0 will cancel this 0. This will cancel this. You'll be left with what? 10 times 58. You have 58 times 10. What do you have? 0 will multiply 8. Give you 0. 0 will multiply 5. You give you 0. 1 will multiply 8. We give you 8. 1 will multiply 5. We give you what? 5. So you have 0, 8, 5. So your answer is what? 580. So your discount here is what? 580. I'm going to point out two things now for students to appreciate what we are doing. But before I point it out, let me subtract this. Subtract your 580 from your 5,800. Let's do it here. 5,800 minus what? 580. This is 0. 8 cannot be subtracted from 0. You borrow 1 from 8 to make it 10. 10 minus 8 will give you 2. You'll be left with 7 here. 7 minus 5, you have 2. And then you have 5. So what we have here is 5,220. 5,220.
2020. I don't forget my promises. I have promised that I was going to explain something. 5,220. So permit me now to explain something that students most times find it very difficult to understand. First of all, now you ask, what if there were no discounts? Are you still going to observe the you know, the, 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 pro, the processes that are involved in writing the figures the way they are, they are written? No. The only reason why we have to bring it in the detail column is because we want to do adjustment before we take it to the total column. So, assuming there was no discount here, there was no discount here. The only thing I need to do is once I add here to this place, I will get this my 1,100 written under the total column. There will be no need for this extra figure that stands for discount. The same thing applicable to Peterson Limited. If there were no discount here, there will be no need for me to write this. I will just add this to this, and then my figure here will be here. There will be no need for the 580. Please, students, you take, that, to take note of that. Now, the second thing I want to explain is that in calculating or in uh, preparing books of account, we don't have anything like minus or plus. These figures are just limited to mathematics. In accounting, our minus represent less and our plus represent what? Add. So anywhere you see less, we are talking about subtraction. And anywhere you see add, we are talking about what? Addition. And if you don't see less here, and assuming I decide to put my figure in bracket, that is another way of writing subtraction. So for instance, if assuming, because an examiner will want to find out all of this, if assuming now we have, I, I choose not to write less here. I can just come here and write my 580 in bracket. Once you see 580 in bracket, it depicts or connotes that this 580 should be subtracted from 5,800 to get to our 5,200 and 20. But whenever you have written less, there will be no need to write your bracket. Whenever you write your bracket, you don't write your less. And whenever you write your less, don't write your bracket. All of these will attract extra marks if you are writing any, any theory questions in accounting. That is why I'm taking my time to explain. Now, we have gotten 5,220 as a value for Peterson, and we also gotten 8. 880 for what? For Coca-Cola. So what we are going to do, we want to know how much we have we've returned back to our supplier. So if you add this to this, if you add your 820, you have 5,220 to 880, you have something. Let's add 5,220 plus 880. This is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus 2 is 10, carry 1. 8 plus 2 is 10 plus here is 11. And then 1 plus 5 is what? 6. So you have 6,000. You have 6,000 what? 100. So that's this 6,100 is the total amount of money that will be posted to your return at was day book in the general ledger. You, then you ask me, how will it be posted? We have established that from the beginning of the lesson that because it is something that is going out of our hand, it is going to be credited in the return um, artwork day book, or you call it the, the purchase journals, and then the corresponding entry will be debited to this individual account. The individual account includes Coca Cola and what? Peterson. Peterson will be debited with what? 880. Why, um, I said Peterson, Coca Cola will be debited with 880. Why, Peterson will be what debited with what with 500 and 5220. Meanwhile, in our own account, in our own in, in Dixon, Dixon and Sons account in the general ledger, you are going to do what credit 6100 as a value of our return um, at was day book. Meanwhile, let's go to our exam guide. If we can see any question that can further explain what we've done so far. As you can see the screen, 
If you check your exam guide, you see what is, show, is showing on the screen already. And then you click on account because it's accounting we are doing. Having done that, you see options for year. That year, I have choose random because the random will give me all the questions I need on, on this particular topic. But we recommend that students can choose a particular year of interest. Then you go straight to get started and the questions will pop up. When the questions will pop up, you begin to answer it one after the other. Because this is a lesson, we are going to limit or stream, streamline the questions to what we have at hand, which is what? Return outwards. And looking at this one, this one, they say the balance on the sales ledger control account at the end of the accounting year represent represent a total what? is going to be your total debtors. Anytime, anything that has to do with sales ledger, it has to do with what? Um, people that are owing us. But that's not what we are looking at. Let's look at question two. The total, that's the sales ledger. Which of the following has multiple uses? This is Jonas. Multiple uses in this context is talking about an account that can be used for more than one function. The first one, return outwards. That's the one we are talking about here. This one is basically for goods returned back to our supplier. Then purchase journals is basically used to record purchase on credit. And then general, general journals is used for all the transactions. So the answer there is what general journals. Let's look at another one before we run off the class. Now, let's look at, they say, in which of the following is purchase of fixed asset on credit first recorded? Purchase of fixed asset, they are first recorded in the general, in the general what? In the journals. They are recorded in the journals. We don't use purchase. We don't use anything that has to do with purchase on credit. Uh, anything that has to do with purchase of fixed asset cannot go through the cash book and they cannot go through the sales account but you can use it you can use the journals to record purchase on credit especially fixed assets so the answer to this one is not general journals it's not general uh, ledger it's not cash book but it is journal proper all right having said that that is how far we can go with our exam guide. We advise and recommend that students should go deeper than that. We have different questions that will always pop up under this particular topic. But before we end the lesson, let's quickly take a review of what we have done. We have defined um, return at worst day book to be book that is used to record goods return back to our supplier. And then we have said that the total of it will be credited to the return outwards day book in the general ledger and the corresponding entry will, will be posted to the debit side of the supplier. And then we've also explained that it has the same columns with purchase day book. It has column for date, particulars, folio, details and total. And we have said that this can have the same treatment with that of purchase day book and sales day book and we've we've looked at an illustration that really helped us to explain the topic so far so we we recommend that students look at different questions and take time to see how they can prepare the return at worst day book